Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 61. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we're here for the Class A Euro Tour. Uh, we're in the uh, Ferrari California. We have upgraded it up from B Class to A Class because we haven't driven it yet and I need to. So uh, starting off with the Circuit de Catalunya, then Silverstone International, Bugatti Circuit, Miguelo Full Circuit, and then Circuit de Catalunya. Let's get going. All right, here we go. Uh, technically championship two, but this is like the first full championship of this stream. Um, we got... Woo! This thing's got some pull. It's fighting an F430. Ooh, like an animal. It's got some brakes on it. Why is there no face cam on the YouTube? Uh, for the sole reason that I don't think it needs it. Like, when you think about it, so YouTube and Twitch are two completely different platforms. Um, we're going to ignore YouTube live streaming because YouTube live streaming is just the same as Twitch. But when you think about it, a live stream platform is sort of more focused on a creator. You very, A lot more people will go and want to interact with a streamer, they'll want to interact in real time with a content creator. So, face cam, being able to see the creator, it's just a win-win, it, it makes sense. With YouTube, a lot of the time, um, granted, on Twitch, this it can be the same, but a, a lot of the time more on YouTube, people are focusing on the content they're searching up for content more often than not so having the face cam there th there have been some videos in the falls the series that i have put my face cam in for like clips and stuff like that hidden in the videos um i think there's two so far so it's it's not often that i do it but then again, it's not often that I have an absolutely hideous race where I crash like seven times. That was a funny one. The TVRs on Motorsport 2. I remember that. That was fucking terrible. <laughs> but yeah, on YouTube, it just... For me, I've, I feel like the face cam would take away from the content. And a lot of people are there for the content. Whereas on Twitch, even though people are there for the content, they're also wanting to interact with the streamer. And that's sort of why people go to a live stream to interact live. Um, and having that face cam is a better option. Yeah, let's see what the comments say. <laughs> like, comments are good and all, but YouTube is a very faceless pla platform uh, for that kind of thing. Obviously, there are some use cases where I'd say, oh yeah, actually having a face cam would make sense. Um, like, generic gameplay videos. I say generic. Like, an, a standard gameplay video. Just a normal, oh yeah, today we're just going to play this. And we're pissing about and having a good time, you know. Seeing people's reactions, but this is just me documenting a journey of completing all the Forza games, so in that sense um for me anyways i don't think i need the face cam and especially when it comes to me doing wrc in the future 
I definitely don't want face cam because my face, when I'm focused on WRC, literally goes like this. Like, I tilt my head in the corners. Like, that's actually going to achieve something. So, you know. <laughs> One can smell cigarette smoke. I don't like it. <laughs> ding dong, ding dong. Reminds me of being a kid and turning the controller on GT5. Do you know? I'll I'll be totally honest, right? I. I have this habit, and I didn't realize why I got this habit, but I got it absolutely years ago. Went a bit wide there. I have this habit that even though I know a button is 100% pressed, I will put more force in my finger expecting the car to go faster. No matter which button it is, whether it's the face button, yeah, a bit wide, okay? We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Whether it's a face button, triggers, bumpers, whatever. I will press harder than I should. Uh, obviously, like, controllers nowadays are a lot more rugged. That it's difficult to press beyond what they are. What they allow, sorry. And I didn't realise why I did this until I played GT5 again. For the first time in, like... God, it must have been like eight years. I think it was 20, 2019, 2020. I'd obviously bought a PS3, got a new PS3, PS3 controllers and all that. And I realized the face buttons were analog. Like it had been so long since I had used a PS3 that I forgot the face buttons were analog. And that's why I pressed harder was because we had dodgy controllers and it only came back to me when I actually, like, did it and played it. Yeah, uh, analog face buttons were so good. Because it meant, like, um, you had actual control over other stuff. So I obviously drove with X square as your accelerator and your brake. But you could actually throttle control with a button and what's even cooler right so the ps2 only had analog buttons there wasn't a trigger on the ps2 controllers but you could still throttle control there were no like analog triggers or anything like that they were buttons that were pressure sensitive like, it was so cool. I still think that's a crazy thing. And then they got rid of it for the PS4. Like, I think some of those games, like Detroit Become Human, would have been so much better with analog face buttons. So much better. You could have done so much more and made that game that much more immersive. Immersive is probably the wrong word. Uh, we now got 20% discount on intake manifold and throttle body and oil and cooling upgrades. And front anti-roll bars and rear anti-roll bars also have a 20% discount. That is a good cue, actually. Like, ah, oh, great. I ain't drunk enough. <laughs> but yeah. Um, obviously, since... I mean, surprisingly, though, I have been leaving the window open because... This room just becomes an absolute sauna. 
but like British British heat in general is ridiculous. So it's hard to explain to anyone from not the UK why it's so difficult to live in the UK with the heat. But when I went to Turkey and Greece and that, I realized why it is so much so much more challenging. It's because the UK is just so humid. 24-7, it's humid. So unless it's like 10 degrees outside, the heat will stick to you. The only place I think that's relatable to England and its heat is probably the rainforest or a rainforesty area. Dum bum dum. Yeah, rainforesty area. Look it up, it's in the dictionary, alright? <laughs> It's a new term. <laughs> new words with Mech. Welcome to Inventing Words with Mech. And galvanize. This is a tune. I don't even know when I first heard this song, but I have vivid memories of my childhood constantly hearing this song, and I have no clue why it's so imprinted into my mind. So I make it harder. Oh, it was in Most Wanted in 2012. You are 100% correct. It was in Most Wanted in 2012, and that was the first time I heard it in a video game. Um, but when I heard it, I was like... I had flashbacks from like when I was... I have a very few memories of when I was a kid, like before the age of 10. Very, very few memories. But... Quite a few of them... Seem to have some form of connection like when I hear this song I get you know like when you hear something or you see something and you sort of remember something in your mind because it has some form of link this seems to be linked with a lot of my childhood memories and again I have no clue why Back. yeah Obviously, if I hear it now, I also have a couple of flashbacks to Most Wanted. But, you know, there's... It just seems like one of those songs, but I can't put a finger on why. And there's a Red Hot Chili Peppers song as well. That I heard a million times before I actually, like heard it myself like I've heard it in the background of a lot of things it sounds crazy but to be fair my mind does crazy shit so it doesn't surprise me <laughs> after the rain after the rain is that by Dai uh, the Kish Daiki guy whatever his name is Yeah. There's a couple of songs. Um, there's a couple that he has that's in Gran Turismo 6. It's like the start... You know when you go to a loading screen, it sort of shows the track and then there's a flag and then... 
Makoto? It, is it like a drum and bass or a rock song? If it's drum and bass, it's Makoto. I, it might be um, Makoto, actually. Oh, I'm loading up uh, Russell Howard. Lovely. Ah! Well, it's kind of a difficult one to um, sort of like pinpoint where you've heard that song from. Because Dike, Dike, whatever his name is, and Makoto both made songs for Gran Turismo from like GT3 onwards and they've sort of travelled through all of the Gran Turismo games so it's hard to tell which artist it could have been but I do recognise it after the rain being quite a common one there's one that I know um, from Makoto it's like um, Black Mist or something and it's like Oh wow 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 It's literally the start of the song, there's no build up, it's just straight into a drum and drum and bass drop. It is Makoto. Fair enough. Yeah, Makoto does Makoto is one of my favorite drum and bass artists that I can go back and listen to and not complain and not be like uh, skip or whatever without fail because he's got such an interesting he's made his own genre almost like jazzy drum and bass it's so cool He makes jazz music as well. It's not just drum and bass. But most of the stuff that you get on uh, Spotify and that, it's all drum and bass. The other songs are mostly like stuff that he gets paid to make for their game or whatever. Not bad. We got a 10% discount on exhaust upgrades by Tubi. Tubi. Tubi, Tubi, Tubi. Ha, ha, ha. Stay pulled shut inside an outside world and I'm sealed in tight. Claustrophobic, catastrophic. This is a tune. I love this. This was in, um, this is another nostalgia trip. I hate Slipknot just because the album adverts I get on Spotify about an album by Slipknot. <laughs> To be honest, yeah, Slipknot is quite a... Um, they're overrated to say that all their songs, like, they're an amazing band altogether. They're not. But they have made some songs that just fucking slap. It's the same with Bring Me The Horizon. People that say, oh my god, Bring Me The Horizon is such a good band. You're a fucking moron. No, they're not. But... Bring Me The Horizon have made two or three songs that are absolutely amazing. So, to say a, a band is good because of two or three songs, like, it, it's not even like a, oh, that's your opinion or whatever. That's fact. Like, the amount of listens to some of those songs is substantially higher on those songs because they are good songs and the rest of them just you know and I know that's how a lot of artists are nowadays but at least some artists can sort of make okay songs from their filler songs that they have for their albums people like Bullet For My Valentine makes a lot of filler songs but a lot of them are pretty good still If a band can't make a filler song and can only make a couple of hits, they're not a good band. Granted, they might have some really good songs that are amazing. It's like Disturbed as well. Disturbed. There are... You've got like, uh, Streaken, Down With The Sickness. Um, 
A lot of people like the sound of silence, even though it's not. Um, I think it's a really good song, but it's not the same genre. It's a strange one. But, like, they've made hits, but I don't think they're a good band. Because they just can't make consistent hits. They can't make good songs between their hits. You know. Bullet for My Valentine, on the other hand, I don't... I think they've got, like, one or two hits. Um... And they were all back in 2005, 2007. And the rest of them have been quite fillerish songs, but they're really good filler songs still, so... Subfocus, I think, is actually all right. But I, I do agree Subfocus do ha does have quite a few filler songs that are just... What the fuck? But Subfocus has a lot of... lot more good songs, so... You know. Before I forget that... This is a song I listened to so much. Like, it was on Guitar Hero. And I played a fuck ton of Guitar Hero as a kid. I've been begging for Microsoft. Microsoft owns Activision now, and Activision made Guitar Hero. Now, even if it costs them five million to make a Guitar Hero game, and they only got three million back, right? I think that two million loss is worth it for the amount of people that would actually respect Microsoft. For making another Guitar Hero. Even if there is a loss involved with it. Because let's be honest. A, a Guitar Hero game is a fairly simple game to program anyways. I know for a fact I want another Guitar Hero. Harmonics have, are sitting on their ass. They haven't made a Rock Band. The thing is I deliberately did not buy Rock Band 4. Because... It was so late into the life cycle of Rock Band, I was like, ah, maybe they'll make Rock Band 5 soon. Still not out. I've completely missed the window that I can buy the game now, as well. It's kind of pointless, so I am just waiting for Rock Band 5 or a new Guitar Hero. There's absolutely nothing. And I know Clone Hero exists and it's free, but Clone Hero just doesn't have that vibe that Guitar Hero gave you. It just doesn't have the same vibe. Not for me anyways, so. Oh, do you know what? That's something I should try and see if it works on the Steam Deck. Clone Hero. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I said I was going to talk, discuss uh, more about the Steam Deck, didn't I? For this episode. Uh, it's Pog. <laughs> it's really fucking good. I Honestly, I want to do like a first impressions video, but there's so many out there that I don't know whether it'll get drowned out. But they're pulling views. Like, there are people getting like 50,000, 100,000 views on these Steam Deck videos. So. I don't know. But I will say, I do like it. It's sort of giving me an excuse to actually, like, play other games, because on my PC, I just ended up buying games and downloading them and not playing them. And I sort of got into that rep repetitive nature of just playing the same thing over and over again because oh look I've got f 8 terabytes of storage which means it's good I've got plenty of storage space for my games I don't have to worry about it but some games just completely get drowned out and never get played 
So at least with that Steam Deck, I literally have enough space for about 10 games. If they're slightly smaller, maybe 20. If they're bigger, 5. But at least I actually play through those games and I have to play them before I can delete and download a new one. And that's what I've told myself anyways. So hopefully I'll finally finish We Happy Few. So yeah, one, one thing that does bug me about the Steam Deck, right? Nobody seems to um, make much of a point about it. Um, but the first time that you load up the Steam Deck, it's slow. Big time. Like, you turn it on, the boot time is like two minutes before it even starts like updating or doing anything. And then it updates. When it restarts, the boot time is another minute after it's done its update. Nobody told me about that. N no YouTube video that I watched when it's... All the YouTube videos of the unboxings were just like, turn it on and wait for it to do its thing. But that normally means like, oh yeah, you press the on button and then... Ah! It's going to um, update and then load. Yo mates, what's up? Welcome. Welcome back from uh, yesterday. Yeah, so normally, you sort of, ah, yeah, updates, but literally the screen is, like, stuck for two minutes, or mine was anyways. So, if you do buy a Steam Deck, just be w warned of that, because I genuinely thought my system wasn't working. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing, mates? Hopefully you're having a good day. Welcome to the stream. Oh. Left to hide. I think we've driven around the full circuit Magello for a while actually in this game. See, here's the thing that I like about the Steam Deck because so many people actually have it. They've got a million units out there at the moment. Um, when it comes to new games that are being developed, I think it's a stupid idea if a developer didn't look into the Steam Deck and making it compatible and verified day one for the Steam Deck. Um, it's stuff like F122. The 2020 version is verified of F1. 2021 is playable. And these were games that came out before the Steam Deck even hit the shelves. Right? F122? Unplayable. Apparently it does not launch at all on the Steam Deck. Like, how can you make a game and it doesn't run on the Steam Deck? There are games, like, I was playing Colin McRae Dirt 1. A game from 2007 for the PC and it runs on the Steam Deck flawlessly. Uh, actually, I lie. It's not flawlessly. When you load it up, the first introduction sequence doesn't actually load. Like the little video. For some reason, I can't get the video to load. The little, like, cutscene animation. But you press the A button and the game loads and it's perfectly fine after that. So, I mean, if you want to watch the cutscene at the start of the game, then it's a deal breaker for you, I guess. But yeah, it's strange. Hey, that's awesome, mates. Uh, how far are you into uh, Motorsport 3? How far into it are you? Ah, ah, at night. Day and night. Woo, woo! I've heard about it, like, being said a lot of times, but I haven't played Rogue Company, so I wouldn't know. Oh, I, I do have a funny story. So, the plan was, right, 
uh, when we came back, there was a game that I was looking at that I was really interested in playing. It's called uh, Dakar Desert Rally. Uh, it's basically based off of the Dakar Rally for 2020, 2021, and 2022. Um, such a bad game. It's a clunky Apex ripoff with a Fortnite camera angle. Yeah, that's pretty shit. Any game that tries to copy another game just instantly won't work. It very rarely pays off. Um, where was I? What was I talking about? I forgot. Zeno, help me. <laughs> oh, Dakar Rally. That was it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, obviously... The game released on the 4th of October. But I was due to come back off my break on the 5th. Like, that was my first stream back. And the fifth was supposed to be Forza. It did end up being Forza. I don't know why I said supposed to. Um, so, obviously, fourth, the game came out. And I bought it on the fourth, planning to play it on the sixth. And we were messing around with Dakar on the sixth. Which is the sole reason why I didn't stream on Thursday because I had no fucking clue what to stream because my plan was deleted because Dakar Rally Dakar Desert Rally is shit it is the such a bad game at the moment um it's obviously made by the same developers and same team as the original Dakar 18 um and Dakar 18 wasn't too bad um, the physics were a little bit meh of Dakar 18, but it was it was an okay game. You could put up with it. Put up and shut up. Sit down. You know. The new one, I'm saying it as an experience off of a PC player. I have watched someone play it who's played it on PS5, and they had barely any of the problems that I experienced. But... A lot of the problems of the game is to do with graphical stuff. So, the physics is broken on all platforms. So, the Dakar cars are really hard to handle. The bikes are okay. The trucks are trucks. They're pretty unmovable. But the Dakar's really unstable. So, you're constantly crashing because of the physics. Uh, and if you weren't crashing because of the physics, you were crashing because the game was unstable. If you're on PC. Frame drops. Um, pop in. Graphic settings had to be on, like, low to medium. To run at a stable 60. And that still sometimes had frame stutters. So. And I'm on a 3060, for fuck's sake. That's a really high-end graphics card. Um, so, yeah, it, it wasn't ideal. Um, but I did, I did give the developers the benefit of the doubt that if they, uh, sort of posted, uh, what's it called? An update that fixed the game within two or three days, then I'd keep the game. Four days later, not even an update still, so I refunded it. I'm not dealing with that. I gave the developers a chance. I obviously put a review on saying I'd give them a chance. I'll keep the game until, you know, an update comes out. But it was just so broken from start. I've refunded three games on Steam in my lifetime. One of them was Rust because the loading time was ridiculous. And now Dakar Desert Rally because it was unplayable from the start. Healing. Yeah, so, I've just noticed that my Steam Deck was left on. It's gone down in half an hour of being left on on the side. It's gone down 3% in half an hour. Like, the Steam Deck is so well optimized. I've not seen optimization like it for a while. Like, I genuinely could use it 
I've had, like, laptops that struggle to last more than three hours. Maybe two hours on a single charge before needing a charger. I'm able to do a lesson and then I need to need it to charge it and whatnot. With this Steam Deck, I kid you not, the projected time in desktop mode was like six and a bit hours. Of just constant usage. I was downloading stuff, watching some YouTube videos on it. Because my main rig was in use at the time, so not by me as well. You know, I spend a thousand five hundred pounds on a computer and I'm not even allowed to fucking use it. <laughs> but, yeah. It is a cracking bit of kit. And surprisingly, right, I, I will not move to Linux. This does not mean I'm going to move to Linux. I will still stick with Windows. But Steam Deck OS is very easy to use. In fact, I found some things on Steam Deck OS were actually easier to use than Windows. That's how simple they've made the deck operating system. Some things have been a lot easier. Stuff like the File Explorer, it doesn't have, like, ridiculous crap that you don't need on it. It's just a bare-bones File Explorer. You know, I don't like to bring up um, stuff that's going on in the world that much because it's quite shit to think about. But, but, if Russia was to ever blow up anywhere in the world, I really hope it's the circuit of Catalonia because this is the world's worst circuit. I really, really hate this track. It's one of the worst circuits that has ever existed. If there are worse circuits than Catalonia, I don't want to see them. Because in most video games that have Catalonia, it's the worst track out of all of them. I would say Laguna Seca, but Laguna Seca, I find, is only shit with European cars. This track is just shit with every car. It's terrible. Like this section here. Oh look, a chicane. That chicane there. Death trap in Formula 1. At least this game doesn't have sausage curbs. Which makes no sense, because this game, it would make more sense to have sausage curbs than Formula One, you know? It's alright. bad. I think uh, today's episode can quite easily go down as one of my most talkative episodes. I don't even know what episode number this is. 60? I think it's number 60. Coca-Cola. Why the hell did I get a Geordie accent for that? Coca-Cola. Jesus.
Actually, I realise it's probably a good idea if I leave my Steam Deck on because I'm downloading uh, Horizon Zero Dawn at the moment. I really hope that Steam, maybe in a year's time, two years time, they make a Steam Deck Pro that has six, maybe eight cores in it instead of four. Um, so that it's like a killer, because that's the one thing I found with this so far. Because of how the C CPU is only four cores, um, even though it has a killer graphics card in it that's surprisingly more powerful than you'd expect because of the fact when it comes to emulation that pretty much re requires only cpu uh four cores isn't quite enough i found that some of my psp stuff just struggles like my phone has a better job doing some of the emulation than the steam deck um obviously for like older older titles yeah sure it might be better but for some of the titles that I was trying to emulate, it wasn't great. Um, but again, that's doesn't really bother me too much because the potential of the Steam Deck, there's just so much there. But one little thing that it's struggling with doesn't bother me. There you go. Alright, I think we got one race left to go. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.